In this video, I'll be going through the 2010 nuclear physics exam. Question 1. Iodine-131 is a radioactive isotope used in medicine because it emits beta particles. Describe what is meant by the term beta particles. Beta particles are electrons. The equation for the reaction is shown below. Write down the atomic number and the mass number for the xenon. Beta decay does not change the mass number because it involves a neutron turning into a proton and electron and so the amount of nucleons stays the same. So our mass number of 131 for iodine is going to be the same for xenon. As part of beta decay, because we've gained a proton however, our atomic number is going to increase by 1, giving us 54. Another way of looking at this is that our atomic number must add to the same on both sides, so that if this side we have 53, and on this side we still need 53, this must be 54, to give us 54 minus 1, which is 53. Name the conservation principle that you use to work out the atomic number. We use the conservation of atomic number, or alternatively the conservation of charge. Another useful isotope is technetium-99m. The letter M stands for metastable, which means it does not decay into a different element. Technetium-99m can be introduced into the body. It emits gamma rays that are detected outside the body, and these are used to make images of various organs. Technetium-99m decays with a half-life of 6 hours, as follows. The technetium-99 then decays by emitting low-energy beta particles. The half-life of technetium-99 is 211,000 years. Its decay is as follows. Describe two important differences between the gamma emission and the beta emission. There are many different comparisons we could make. The ones I'll choose is that beta is a particle, gamma is an electromagnetic wave, and that beta is negatively charged, whereas gamma is uncharged. Explain why the properties of technetium-99m make it ideal for making images of various organs. Once again, there are a few we could choose from. Its half-life of 6 hours is long enough to last for the duration of the procedure, but short enough to have a large enough decay rate that it will produce radiation with enough intensity to form an image. It produces gamma rays, which have a high penetration. This means that they will be able to reach the detector and have a low chance of ionizing and damaging tissue. The half-life of technetium-99M is 6 hours. 12 milligrams of technetium-99M is injected into a patient and starts to decay into technetium-99. Calculate the amount of technetium-99 present in the patient after 24 hours. 24 hours is 4 half-lives. 6 hours fits into 24 4 times which means that 24 hours is 4 half-lives, which means that our technetium-99M starts at 12, halves once to get to 6, twice to get to 3, three times to get to 1.5, and once more to get to 0.75 milligrams. Now, because we're asked to calculate the amount of technetium-99, not technetium-99M, our amount of technetium-99 is going to be our original starting amount of 12 milligrams, all of which has decayed into technetium-99, minus the 0.75 milligrams remaining, which gives us 11.25 milligrams. Question 2. In 1905, Ernest Rutherford carried out an experiment to determine the nature of atoms. He fired alpha particles at a thin gold foil. After carrying out the experiment, he concluded that the atoms were mainly empty space, and that most of the matter was contained in a small, very dense, positively charged object that was more massive than the alpha particle. The object later became called the nucleus. If there was air between the alpha source and the gold foil, the air would become ionized. Explain what is meant by the term ionized. This is the removal of electrons from the atom, leaving it positively charged. Describe the results of the experiment, and explain clearly how he linked his results to his conclusion. Rutherford had three main observations, from each of which he drawed an important conclusion. Because most alpha went right through unaffected, the atom must be mostly empty. A small amount of alpha were deflected. As alpha is positive, this implied a positive region. As it was a small amount, this implied the region was small and dense. 
A very small amount of Alpha bounced back, this implied the region had a much larger mass than Alpha, and was very dense. As a means of identifying the nature of Alpha, Beta and Gamma radiation, Rutherford fired them through a magnetic field. The diagram below shows the results of his experiment. Identify the three unknown types of radiation, give an explanation for your answer, you may assume all the particles are travelling at a similar speed. First of all we see that Y is going right through unaffected, so this must be the uncharged Gamma radiation. Now we know that the magnetic field is into the page, so if we use the right hand rule, taking our right hand and pointing our fingers into the page, to simulate an upwards deflection, we can point our palm upwards, doing so you'll find that your thumb is pointing towards the right, which indicates the direction of positive charge movement, meaning that a positive charge travelling towards the right will be upwardsly deflected, which is what our X is doing, so it must be our alpha particle. Because our Z particle deflects in the opposite direction, this one must be our beta. Another means of identifying this is that our beta is deflecting at a much greater angle, which it does because it has a much smaller mass. So let's now put our reasons into words. Using the right hand slap rule, we can determine that a positive charge deflects upwards. It also deflects less than Z due to its much larger mass. Gamma is unaffected as it has no charge. Using the right hand slap rule, we determine a negative charge would deflect down. It also deflects more than X because of its much smaller mass. 